What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a week seven. This is a Sunday recap. Um, for the uh, Thursday night game that, that kicked off week seven with Seattle at San Francisco, that's a different podcast and a different video on YouTube. Uh, for the Android users uh, with the Google Play Store, the name of the app is the Podcast Source app. Um, the Box app, I, I don't know what's going on with that, but it's also it's called the, the Podcast Source app. I had one person ask um, on the video about the actual name. Uh, it is the Podcast Source app on Google Play for iTunes uh, people. You just gotta search Google Google uh, uh, G Myers World Podcast inside the store, and you'll find it inside the podcast section. But for the for the Google users, and it's been updated also in the description box, and it's separated for the Google users now. It's the Podcast Source app. So if you're new to this recap, that's the way you can listen to it on the go. You can uh, download it and not have to worry about anything going on while you're in your car and all that other kind of stuff. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and um, start off with the Buffalo Bills at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They actually played this game in London. I don't know why I got up to watch this game. It just means that the NFL is very addicting. I knew that Buffalo was probably gonna lose this game for some reason because they're Buffalo and Rex Ryan is a part of it. And like, again, let me just be very, very clear with it. It's not, uh, I'm not saying that Rex Ryan is not a good coach. I'm just saying that there's a lot of hot air that's blown out of him and sometimes people want more results than talk. That's all I'm saying. It's not a knock on him because you know the players like him, things like that, et cetera, et cetera. That's not my beef with him. My, my beef is simply this. You, you, have to, you have to perform. If you start off with such a dominating defense, you can't do that. You, you can't lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this game was crazy because EJ Manuel, I don't know if you guys remember when they, um, they had like a debut with EJ Manuel uh, when they were reviewing to see if they were going to sign him. And um, they just signed him right away to like a contract. Like he, he didn't really show anything. They were like, yeah, we, we, we like him. I don't know whose decision that was to to sign him but ej Manuel is he's not the guy he's not a guy that he should even be second strength he's definitely not a guy that should even be second strength um he's pretty much um he's lacking in everything that's necessary for the buffalo bills to do anything and it's amazing to me that tyrod taylor was a backup for all these years and now he's like all of a sudden the savior like everybody can't wait for him to get back from his injury and I don't know if he's gonna be able to do as much uh that's needed for the Buffalo Bills either like he he does things but you know, he's had games where I didn't know what he was doing either. Um, so it, it, it's pretty much a situation right now where I don't know what Buffalo is doing. And we know that they're not getting a wild card anymore. So it is what it is when it comes to that situation. We're never going to worry about that wild card talk anymore. That's just a joke. Uh, we don't need to even indulge in that. The Jacksonville Jaguars, man, they tried to give this game away. They really did try to give this game away. And every time I was looking at it, I'm like, it doesn't make, you know, you're, you're up, what was it, 27 to 3? And I'm looking at it like, it doesn't even really make any sense that this will be possible. Uh, for the Buffalo Bills to come back, and they did everything possible. LaShawn McCoy with that fumble, when he faked an injury to act like something was wrong with him and then came right back out when they got the ball back. Um, pretty fascinating. It's pretty fascinating that, you know, like, these athletes are such jokes. Like, it was nothing wrong with that guy. I, I don't care what anybody says. Look, there's injuries, and then there's guys that's like, look, man, I really screwed up right now. Let me just fake this for a little bit. And that's what he did. You don't just come right back out and just start playing hard after you're supposed to be injured and you're sitting there and guys got to come out to the field for you. It doesn't happen like that. Um, other than that, you know, I, I just really don't, I, I don't know what else to say about this, this team, this Buffalo Bills team, but like getting back to the Jaguars, they fought really hard, um, to win this game. And, you know, Bortles played okay. He was trying to give them the game away. He was throwing picks. He was doing, he was doing whatever he had to do. And, um, you know, Ronald Darby from the Bills, he helped do a lot of three and outs, um, you know, for the Bills defense and stuff like that. They, they were, they were trying to work it, but at the end of the day, man, it wasn't enough. And Buffalo is becoming very, very disappointing right now. It's, it's very, very, very disappointing to watch them. And um, it, it, very more sooner than later, they're going to start looking at Rex Ryan and, and, and just realize, oh, look, bro, this guy right here got to go. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's not a situation where it's anything exciting about him right now. Like I said, once he, once he lost the weight and now he's just a regular skinny Rex Ryan, it's not the same thing. We need fat Rex Ryan back. You know, fat Rex Ryan... You know, when the whole Rebus thing was going on and he was acting like Rebus wasn't in the room and stuff like that, that that, that was the Rex Ryan that we need. Um, right now, you know, the liposuction Rex Ryan is not getting the job done. It is what it is. But the game was more exciting than I thought it would be. And it was just a pleasure, I guess, for the London guys, to, you know, the London fans to see it. Because I thought this game was going to be a joke. But it was a high-scoring game. And all throughout, you just didn't know who was going to win. But at the end of the day, I knew the Buffalo Bills were going to lose to Jacksonville. I just felt that that was going to happen. Um, I'm not even sure if I picked them 
I might have picked Buffalo because I thought they had to win, but it was just when when the game started, it was just a weird game. You know, the blowout started, and I was just like, wow. And even when the Buffalo Bills started coming back, I tweeted out that that fumble by LaShawn McCoy was going to cost them the game. And eventually, even though Buffalo went up after a pick six, Jacksonville came right back down and scored. So uh, it was a great game for London, and uh, I guess it worked out for them. But I didn't expect it to be like that. Minnesota at Detroit. I know I definitely picked Minnesota to, uh, to beat Detroit because Detroit has Matthew Stafford um, and Jim, Call Jim Caldwell as head coach still currently. I don't know why he's still the head coach. He might be fired before the season's over, but um, I have no idea why that man is still a head coach in the league. Uh, his face just doesn't correspond with what's supposed to be going on in all actuality. So I don't know how long it's going to take for the Detroit fans to say, you know what, uh, we don't need a soccer dad at head coach. Because he, he, he you know, it, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that, Detroit, like, Matthew Stafford, when he first started off and Calvin Johnson was Megatron, which Calvin Johnson is no longer Megatron, even though he got a touch, whatever he did, he was decent yesterday, but he's still no longer Megatron. Um, he was just throwing a ball in the air, similar to Dante Culpepper with Randy Moss. He was just throwing a ball in the air. He didn't care where it landed. He knew Randy Moss was going to be there. That's what Megatron used to give him. That part is over now. That's over. Now you got to make plays. Now you have to make plays, and that's what the problem is. That's where we're having an issue with Matthew Stafford. He has to be accurate. He has to try to, you know, do reads, things like that, because Calvin Johnson, they're single covering him, and there's no more guys open on the other side. So now you got to play, and that's what's happening. So Detroit is pretty much written off. Jim Cole has to go. Matthew Stafford has to go. A lot of stuff has to happen there. Um, their running game is garbage. I don't know what they're doing. Um, but it, it, look, I, I've been told you guys that they were done. That, that I, I've been, you know, I don't know if that's proper, proper uh, vernacular, proper English. I, 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 what is it? I have. Listen, they're done. They, they, they've been done. They've been done since like week one. They're garbage. I, no, hold. On. Did they win their first game? I don't even know. No, no, they didn't. They, they got like one win or something. Yeah, they, they suck. Okay, Minnesota now. I think Adrian Peterson almost had 100 yards, but uh, I don't think he had a touchdown or anything like that. But it was enough of a run game. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater did an unbelievable pass. Well, you know, receivers reached out, caught it. Um, I told you, I, I, I like Teddy Bridgewater, and I think if Adrian Peterson gives us some time to, to, to you know, to open up the field to get things done, they can, they can make plays, and Minnesota can win some games. And I'm not saying that they're going to go and win in the playoffs or anything like that. I'm just saying that they, they, they're starting to build something that can work. That's, that's what they're starting to do. They're starting to build something that can work. And that's a very good thing for a young team like that. Well, you know, when I say young, I'm talking about the quarterback position. Um, it's a very, it's very good to see that they have some confidence in him and he's going to be able to do some things. And that's pretty much all you can actually look for in this situation. Um, but it wasn't really much, it wasn't really a game that was exciting. I can't tell you that that, that was the case. Uh, but it was good to see Minnesota win because I actually picked them to win. And, um, I'm only going strictly off the fact that Jim Caldwell is the coach and Matthew Stafford is the quarterback. That was my whole census of picking them. That was it. That's it. New Orleans at Indianapolis. I'm going to tell you this right now. Andrew Luck needs to go and sit on the bench. He needs to go. You know, he had 333 yards, all that crap. Two touchdowns. What is it? He had three touchdowns, three interceptions. He had some kind of crazy stat. He was just doing what... Listen, this guy needs to go sit down someplace. Andrew Luck... I, I just can't wait to see what they pay him. I, I really can't wait to see what they pay him. I, I'm so honest about that because it does not... Yeah, it, none of this makes any sense to me. If, he, if he's able to make anywhere near top quarterback money... I don't feel bad for these teams anymore. I don't feel bad for them. It's no way that you can pay Andrew Luck high, high money with the way he's playing right now. He he right now is playing for his contract. And he's playing like total garbage. He's playing like total trash. This dude goes out on whatever day of the week that you guys put your garbage out. It varies from state to state. Whatever day it is, that's where he should be. Andrew Luck should be wrapped up in a black bag and be just waiting to be put in a, in a trash compactor. This guy is trash. His turnovers are ridiculous. And then when and then on the podium, he's acting like, yeah, you know, we gotta we gotta go to work and fix it. Seriously? What what else are you supposed to do? Like you're just saying, I hate when they say basic things. Why are you saying basic things? Why are you telling me and the fans that you're gonna do what you're supposed to be doing anyway? We don't care about that. Why are you out there just throwing picks like a maniac? It's so ridiculous, man. I, I'm just so done with this guy. I, I, I don't even care anymore. I'm, I'm just, you know what? It's over. I'm done. Um, pretty much right now, I'm going to just tell you straight out. 
uh, Andrew Luck is the, is the sole problem. They need to put Matt Hassel back in. And um, Chuck Pagano is, has a rough road ahead of him with the games that are lined up. He should be fired before this is all said and done. New Orleans, I don't know how Drew Brees is doing it. I really just don't know because the guy has a noodle arm and I don't think he's anything like I don't think he's anything like he once was. But they're finding ways to win. Obviously, the Panthers are the real monsters in that division. So I'm not really worried about New Orleans at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really worried about New Orleans doing anything, making any kind of noise, doing anything of, of the sorts to make any kind of noise in the playoffs. That's not something that I'm scared about. Um, but at the same time, you got to give them credit. You got to give you got to give them Saints credit. And I know a lot of guys leaving comments on Twitter, on YouTube, like, yo, bro, watch that Who That Nation. I'm not watching anything. They're not doing anything. Who That Nation ain't doing anything this year. They could do whatever they're doing right now, but it doesn't really, it's not going to equate to playoffs. So, you know, enjoy it. Um, like I said, I'm always happy for the fans when they're able to get something, um, you know, that, that makes them not want to go crazy with it. Uh, but we, we, we all know. Let's let's just be honest about it. You beat, you beat the uh, Colts with Andrew Luck as a starter. Like anybody's doing that right now. You know what I'm saying? The, Geico, the Gecko from Geico is doing that right now. Just suit him up. Andrew Luck is a horrible quarterback at this point. I don't know what happened to him. People are saying that he's hurt. They're making excuses for him. Doesn't matter. You, look, so you got to figure, if he's hurt, bench him. One, two, three, just bench him. He's hurt, bench him. That fixes everything. But don't give me the excuse that he's hurt. I, I just don't want to hear it. Matt Hasselbeck is sitting there at 2-0. and Put him in then. Put him in. He'll do something better. But right now, they suck. Pittsburgh at Kansas City. Pittsburgh 13, Kansas City 23. I guess Landry Jones is not the answer. You know what I'm saying, bro? I, I was wrong. I jumped on the bandwagon. I, I said to bench Vic forever. I told you guys to bench Vic and put him in purgatory. I didn't know that this guy would come out and play like this. I had no idea that Kansas City had anything in them. I thought that all Andy Reid wanted to do was have cheesesteaks and, and the season was over once, you know, uh, LaSha what was this guy? Jamal Charles was hurt. I had no idea that they would come out and this dude West would put up 100 yards and touchdowns. I, bro, the NFL is just so crazy. Um, and it makes you go crazy trying to decipher what's going to happen with so many things that are involved with it. But I have to give kudos to the Kansas City Chiefs, man. They went out there and played hard and they destroyed the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ledger Jones was throwing picks like that was what he was supposed to be doing. I don't know if something happened to him over the last time. He was wearing really crazy getup um, for the, um, the post-conference. Um, when he was when he was sitting up there like he didn't know what was going on and I guess everything was a shock to him and what we saw initially was just something of it, it just wasn't something that we you know that we were supposed to get used to but after watching him play I guess I'll take Michael Vick again you know that, that that's what happens bro like I, I just don't know what these guys are gonna deliver week to week it's the NFL but th this is unacceptable to me for you to go out there throw two interceptions whatever you were doing bro I I, I caught one of the interceptions like like when they were uh in their own territory in the back over there. I, I don't know what he's doing, uh, but the Pittsburgh Steelers pretty much, Ben Roethlisberger, I don't know when he's coming back, but it seems like he's the only quarterback that can actually get it done, in, in my opinion at this point. Um, I really, you know, Macklin was out the concussion. You know, they said he passed and he didn't pass and all kind of pass. He was supposed to be starting for me in my fantasy. Then I saw he had a big O next to him, whatever. I didn't expect Kansas City to do this, but the run game was very serious and they were able to get it done. And that's the bottom line, the run game, man, as much as this is a passing league, a lot of things start with the run. Um, and that that's pretty much where we are with that. That, that was that was a very uh, interesting thing right here because I had no idea that Kansas City would win this game. And, um, you know, I, I definitely picked wrong on this one. And watching it, Landry Jones probably needs some more time. He needs some more reps. He needs to uh, be out there a lot more. Something else has to give with it. And that's pretty much it. Um, Houston at Miami. Houston 26, Miami 44. I told you guys about Dan Campbell. And, you know, people laughed at me when I said he eats babies. And I'm talking about the babies from uh, Planned Parenthood, like, you know, the stem cell research, not actually eating human babies. The guy is jacked out of his mind. He's probably on steroids still. Whatever it is, I'm a, I'm a workout guy. I'm always in the gym. I'm a gym rat. I love to see dudes out there that look like that, that coach men. You know, you don't have to look like that, but it just makes it look a lot better when you do look like that. You know what I'm saying? So with the way that that is, it's, it's, a, very, it's, it's a very unique situation that they go out and they start 41-0. You know what I'm saying? They, they started 41-0, and it's a real interesting thing that happened after that point. Like, they didn't even care. They just let Houston score, garbage time, whatever was going on. It was a very, very serious, serious instance um, that all of a sudden, the Miami Dolphins are playing like that. All of a sudden. You jump out to a 40. Meanwhile, Joe Philbin is sitting on the sideline looking like a dead person. A dead person, like like literally a dead person from The Walking Dead, and nobody wanted to fire him. I've been advocating for him to be fired for like the last year. I don't know how he came back into the season. I, I don't understand. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me 
how he was able to do that. I don't know what was going on, but look at what a big difference a change of scene, a change of face at the head coach position makes. Sometimes guys gotta go. And and this was a great firing from Joe Philbin. And I hope Dan Campbell continues to, to, to coach these guys up for however long it may last. Cause you know, sometimes a coach has to go. Not every coach can go on forever and just keep it going or whatever like that. Sometimes guys wanna hear a new voice. Sometimes you get a Bill Belichick that's consistently well, uh, you know, does well, but he can't win every time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but th but those are rarities. You get, you know, Mike Tomlin, I think can, can, can make it happen. Um, I like I like John Harbaugh. I loved Jim Harbaugh before they got rid of him, and now he's in Michigan in uh, NCAA. But you know, it, it's a situation where it's just like I, I don't understand why Joe Philbin was there for that long, looking dead with varicose veins in his eyeballs. I don't know what was happening, but let's just go back to what Miami's doing right now. They are balling. You know what I'm saying, bro? Balling. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know what's gonna happen because you know confidence could take you but so far. But Miami with Tannehill at quarterback. I'm not trusting them. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit up here and talk about they're gonna beat the Patriots. And I, look, look, they, they gonna beat Buffalo. You know what I'm saying, bro? Everybody's beating Buffalo. Buffalo is garbage. They may beat the Jets. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I guess, you know, everybody's doing it. I, I don't see why not. I don't see why they wouldn't beat them. Um, you know, I, I, th I think they can, they, they can do some things. They can do some things in that AFC East, but they're not beating the Patriots. Nobody's beating the Patriots, man. Nobody's beating the Patriots. <laughs> That, that, that right there, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not betting anything like that. Like, I think the Patriots may lose the game in the regular season, but ultimately they're going to win the Super Bowl. And you know what I'm saying? And, and that's just pretty much what it is. It's, it's nothing else going to happen past that. Houston is a joke. Aaron Foster's injured again. What else is new? Nothing really to talk about there. You, 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 you listen, bro. Again, J.J. Watt, I don't know what to say about it. You know, he. I understand it's tough. I understand all the crap. Oh, he's only one guy. Guess what, J.J. Watt? It's part of the game, bro. You're gonna you, you're gonna be uh, criticized. Stuff like that. Stuff like that's gonna happen. Um, it's no longer the JJ Watt show in there, bro. Dudes are doing whatever they want to do in there, and that's just yeah, bro. It's what it's like a brothel. It's like the brothel that Lamar Odom was at. You know, dudes are doing whatever they want to do, and it's legal. You know, Las Vegas, baby. Like this is crazy. The Texans, bro, they're done. I don't even know what's going on with Arian Foster. I haven't even looked up and seen what was going on. Looked up anything about him since yesterday. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's injured again. That guy is always injured. Uh, he's very fortunate to have gotten the success that he's gotten. Um, you know, with his whole thing coming into the league and stuff like that. Um, but pretty much they're gonna have to move on from him because you can't have a guy out there that's always injured. Similar to Sean Lee with the Dallas Cowboys. The guy's always hurt. Like, bro, he's playing now, but he'll be hurt probably tomorrow. He's gonna have a hand nail hanging from his cuticle or something. I, look, whatever it is, Houston is done. They're, they're pretty much done. Brandon Hoyer at QB, bro, really? In the National Football League? Okay, congratulations to Miami and the Miami fans. Dan Campbell, keep eating them babies, bro. All right, this game right here, this was my game of the week right here. You know what I'm saying? New York Jets at New England Patriots. New England 30, the New York Jets 23. Obviously, we know it came down to an onside kick. Brandon Marshall don't know how to sit and be set for a freaking, yo, for a spike. You got to be moving in motion. Like, what are you doing, Brandon? Go sit down. You, yo, listen, the guy wants to win so bad. I understand that. But for the most part, the guy's continuously hurting his team with stupid plays. One game, he tried to throw the ball back to a guy. Like, like, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what's happening. I'm going to tell you this, though. When Tom Brady leads you in rushing, that, that, that's a problem, the Patriots. You know, Patriots. I know uh, Lewis was, um, you know, out, whatever like that. And they do what they have to do to win. Um, I do want to note, though, that this game could have been a lot worse. We had dropped touchdowns. 11 total balls dropped. Um, so, you know, Jet fans, pump your brakes a little bit. You know what I'm saying, bro? It wasn't as close as the score shows. Um, but Tom Brady still found a way to make things work, even with his guys dropping those passes. You know what I'm saying? 11 passes dropped. I don't I don't think I've ever seen that by the Patriots. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that uh, for the whole time that I've, I've been watching the New England Patriots. So that was pretty fascinating for me to see that. Um, but at the same time, the Jets played hard. But don't 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 think that the score reflects what the game was. Because if the Patriots were catching those balls, uh, no, 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 no. It would have been, been a lot more blowout-ish. Blowout-ish. Um, but all in all, Tom Brady, man, I, I, listen, I don't know, bro, I don't know if the deflate gate, the gate, what kind of gate, if it's a gate, some kind of gate made him play, like, he's so angry, like, he's just out there, even at the, at the post conference, it looked like he was like a, a vampire, like, he was so angry that the score was that close, I don't know if you guys caught that, but you can go ahead and check it out on NFL.com or whatever, and look and see how his face was, he was so mad, it was like he was crying, because he knows that the Jets shouldn't have been that close with the score, that, that's why he, that's why he looked like that. 
I don't think you guys understand the, the anger inside him for that game even being that close because it shouldn't have been. All, all, the, all these, you know, drop passes, things like that, it was crazy and ridiculous. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, over, all in all, the Jets didn't play that bad. Um, but, and, and, you know, I want to give their defense credit for saying that they're probably the, you know, you got to give them credit saying that they're the reason that they're dropping the balls. No, that wasn't the case. Dudes are dropping the ball. Uh, but the Jets played well with Fitzpatrick. I hope to, um, I hope they stay with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's really no re no need to even look at Geno Smith's face at any time. He shouldn't even be practicing with them. He should actually be doing the garbages and doing maintenance in the um, the Jets stadium now. Like, there's no need for him to be there. We could just deal with Fitzpatrick. We know what we're going to get from Fitzpatrick. And uh, that's pretty much the case. But kudos to the Jets for trying, man. But it shouldn't have been that close. And um, Tom Brady is, is making a very big statement about what needs to happen to win. Um, I'm pretty sure the balls were well deflated yesterday, and he just went out there and found a way to win. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. Grunt Costa with that late touchdown. Look, look, it works out. The Patriots are going to work. They're going to find a way to win every time. They're going to find a way to win every time. And that's what's happening right now. And I just feel like the New England Patriots may win the Super Bowl this year, like I said, from the beginning of this year. Cleveland at St. Louis. St. Louis 24. Cleveland 6. You know, I had somebody ask me about, you know, Gurley. Uh, what do I think about him? Stuff like that. I haven't seen enough from him. I know he's had like a couple hundred, a hundred yard games. I like what I'm seeing, but I haven't seen enough. You know, in this league, you gotta, I gotta wait for the season to be over. You know what I'm saying? He does things that's like, you know, makes me a little excited for the, you know, for the, uh, for the Ram fans and things like that. But it's nothing amazing to me yet. You know, he's just getting a couple hundred yard games. Like, not like he's doing like Le'Veon Bell, 200 yard games. You know, he's getting hundred yard games. He's, he's playing. He's a player, um, and it, it's, it, it's good to see that. But I haven't seen enough to be like, yo, bro, he's the guy yet. Um, you know, I, I wait it out. I don't like to jump on and be like guys like, yeah, Andrew Luck is like, he's a beast. And then look at Andrew like, yeah, he's a real beast, all right? A beast that needs to be shot. Um, but, um, you know, it's, they, 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 he's playing well. Gurley's playing well. The, the Rams played well. They played the Browns. You know, um, I don't know how Johnny Manziel was able to play. They never suspended him for the thing with him allegedly beating his girlfriend. I don't know what the NFL is doing. I don't know what's happening with that, but. It is what it is. I don't know. I'm not going to jump into that right now. That's a whole different podcast uh, that we could get to at another time. Uh, but as far as the St. Louis Rams go, you're supposed to beat the Browns. This is nothing exciting. I thought you should have beat them by more. You know, um, they don't have a real quarterback. Um, I, I don't understand why teams are not beating them by more points. But the, Brown, uh, the Browns did what they were supposed to do. They went out there, got their, got their butt whipped. And the Rams did what they were supposed to do. They went out there and whipped butt. Nothing really to talk about. Nothing exciting about the game. That's pretty much it. Atlanta at Tennessee. This was this was a tough game, man. This was a tough game uh, for the for the Falcons. And some games are going to be grind them out games. Obviously, I didn't see Mariota in there. I saw some other guy in there. Um, I can't pronounce his name now. Uh, but he was out there and uh, he threw a pick late and uh, cost them the game. And uh, that's pretty much what it was about this game. I will tell you this though, Devontae Freeman is for real. And I've been saying that. See, he's a guy that I can say that about because I see a lot of potential in him. Because it, it, listen. I, nobody expected the Falcons to be playing the way they're playing right now. Six and one, all this crap. Nobody expected this. And Devontae Freeman is, has a lot to do with why it's happening. So that's a more of an impactful thing. As far as Gurley goes, he's had his plays like that, but he hasn't impacted the game the same way Devontae Freeman has. So when I speak about Devontae Freeman, it's just something about him. I've been watching football a long time. And, you know, he's a lower running back to the ground, similar to like a Barry Sanders. Like these guys, when they're so short, they're able to do a lot of other things. Gurley has a little bit more height on them. Um, you know, he's a lot, he's a lot stronger, more not, you know, it's just a different type of back. And at this point I would take Devonte Freeman over Gurley and I know it's early, but, and I kind of ride with early and Gurley, but I, I would at this point do that. But this was a grinded out game. Uh, Tennessee played extremely hard. It was a tough loss for him. Um, you know, it is what it is, bro. But Atlanta had to pull this one out and they successfully did that. So I have no qualms with them. Uh, they do, but it wasn't an exciting game. You know, you can look at the score and see that, but it is what it is. Tampa Bay at Washington. Tampa Bay 30, Washington 31. I knew Tampa Bay was going to lose the game. I didn't know it would be this close, though. Um, obviously, you have uh, in Tampa Bay, Lovey Smith as head coach, so that's not going to work for you. Obviously, you're going to get a loss in your foul. Things like that are going to happen. Vincent Jackson got hurt, I believe, in this game. I don't know what's going on with him. He's mad old. He needs to go sit down someplace, too. He saw him really make me upset. Mike Evans is the future there. Um, Kirk Cousins had some kind of rage. I don't know what he was doing um, at some point in the game. And um, the Redskins went out and handled the business. They, they were able to win a high-scoring game. 
Um, this is nothing to be exciting about. You beat the Bucks. Like, bro, everybody's beating the Bucks. You know what I'm saying, bro? Bro, suit my grandmother up and put her out there. She's going to take care of her by herself. Um, so it's not exciting that the Buccaneers lost the game. What's more crazy is that Lovey Smith is still a head coach in the National Football League. That's what I'm looking at. That's what's more fascinating to me. You know, regardless of what everybody else is seeing, that's what's more fascinating to me. Um, I don't understand how this man is still a head coach in the league. Um, but we'll, we have yet to see what goes on. We, we, we'll see what happens. But certain guys are not the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see that I could talk about the Pittsburgh losing, but I'm not mad at Mike. I'm not as mad as Mike Tomlin because I know that he's a leader of men. You know that certain coaches are leader of men. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like it's because he happens to be a person of color. No, 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 no. I don't care what color you are. The same way I went at Joe Philbin is the same way I'll go at this guy, Lovey Smith. Bro, when you hurt the fans, see, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fan of any team, so I don't really care, but all my family members and friends are fans, and it's annoying to hear them complain about this coach sitting there looking like a slouch, you know, just looking real ridiculous on the sideline that makes no sense, and he just stays there, and the owner's like, what's up, bro? Everything good? Like, bro, he has to go. Lovey Smith has to be fired right now during this podcast. I actively, Oakland at San Diego, this score is nothing like what it really was, so don't even think about it. Oakland was whipping their tail. Oakland was beating them. Like, I don't want to bring it up again, man, but listen, man, you know, AP, bro, you know, like he was beating them badly. He was beating them badly, like Adrian beat your son. I'm telling you this right now. At one point, San Diego had three boys, like 31 to three. It was crazy. They were beating them. Oh my, listen, Amari Cooper's a real player. Amari Cooper's a real beast. You just throw the ball up in the air. He's coming down with it. It was bad. You know, Philip Rivers just wants to have sex with his wife all the time. He's expecting his eighth child. I thought it was his 10th kid. I don't even know what he's doing, but I don't think he even has any testosterone in his body to throw the ball anymore because he was just doing, he played horrible. It was a horrible sighting. And then they had the nerve to try to establish the run down 31 points with Melvin Gordon. San Diego, are you serious? You're establishing the run and you're down 31 points? Bro, I'm so done. I'm, 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 so, I'm so done. I'm so done with San Diego and I've been done with them for a while, but it's just getting worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse, and it doesn't seem like there's any stoppage of what's going to happen in the near future. I just don't understand. I don't understand what they're doing, and it doesn't make any sense to me. And it's point blank. San Diego sucks. The Raiders went out there and handled their business. Amari Cooper on that screenplay, though? How are you giving up a 52-yard touchdown on the screenplay right there? Like, what are you guys doing? Is anybody playing D? Nobody wants to play D. Okay, I got you. Oh, I, bro, San Diego, I got you, bro. I got you. No problem, bro. But, uh, you know, special shout-out to Amari Cooper. The man is playing like somebody possessed. Speed like I haven't seen in a while for the Raiders. You know the Raiders used to be an all-speed team. Um, I haven't seen speed like that in a while. Um, and... It, it was very, very good to see that, man. It was very, very good to see that. That was unbelievable. Amari Cooper, what a what a game, man. As far as, like I said, Phillip Rivers needs to stop having so much sex. He needs to keep some testosterone inside his body, and maybe he'll throw a better football. Here we go right now. Oh, my goodness. At real Skip Bayless. You heard Skip Bayless all last week with this whole Matt Castle thing. Oh, Matt Castle this, Matt Castle that. I would love for you guys to tweet him this video. Because we're, we got to get on Skip Bayless right now. I love me some Skip Bayless, man. I, lo I love what he does. I, you know, you know, pretty, he's very objective. He's very, very um, uh, adamant about what he believes in, regardless of what anybody else wants to pick. And he goes with what his gut feeling is most of the time. Um, you know, obviously, we know he's a Dallas fan. And that's usually a, a problem because you don't think clearly. and You just say things that doesn't make any sense. But he was going all over Stephen A. Smith about, you know, Matt Castle being a winner. You know, he had the Patriots 11 and 5, all that stuff. Matt Castle is a bum. He threw a ball that, listen, I don't throw footballs. And I could have threw it, threw it better than he, he just threw the ball in the air. It was in the air for like 30 minutes and he threw a pick. I don't know what he was doing. Matt Castle is, yo, they have to put Brandon Weed and probably back into the game. Matt, look, look, look man. Darren McFadden played very, very well. Very, very well. You know, Matt Castle went out there and threw two key picks. Matt Castle is a horrible, horrible quarterback. He's a... Let me, let me just say this right now. The Patriots system, I could be successful as the quarterback in the Patriots system because Bill Belichick doesn't ask the team or the players to do more than what they're supposed to do. When Tom Brady was injured for that season, they put him in there. He was able to successfully do it. Point blank period. They don't ask you to do more than you're supposed to do. Matt Castle is not a winner. I'm sorry, Skip Bayless. I know you love Dallas. I'm sorry. He's not a winner. 
He is not a winner. I repeat, he is not the winner. He's not an answer for the Dallas Cowboys while Tony Romo is out. He's not. Stephen A. Smith was absolutely correct in saying that you were you were in the clouds. Something was going on. Maybe your coffee was spiked. Something was happening that you thought that Matt Castle would be the answer. Read horrible game. He had one good pass to, to, to Witten on the left. That was like you know like a, a perfect dot into the seam. Excellent play. That was it. Other than that, Darren McFadden, unbelievable game. Unbelievable game. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of things though. OBJ tried to one hand Brandon Carr again, but then he didn't get it. But then Ruben Randall did. I think it's about time that Brandon used Carr, as Skip Miller says, needs to retire. If if OBJ caught that pass again in the same same sideline again, I'm telling you this right now. I'm telling you guys this right now. I would push for Brandon Whedon to be, you know, just cut from the Dallas Cowboys. Dudes are one-handing him on a regular basis. This is a regular, this is regular action that's happening right now. This guy is always getting one-handed. Are you serious? Ruben Randall is one-handing you? OBJ barely missed that catch to one-hand you? You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me right now. Seriously, you have to be kidding me. You just have to be. You cannot have people trying to one-hand you on a regular basis, man. It's out of control now with this. This is ridiculous. This is this is just ridiculous. And that's that that's what really made me upset about this. And that's why I was I was just flaming yesterday. I was so upset that he was still actually in the league. Brandon Carr. Brandon Hughes Carr. He is ridiculous, man. You're giving up all bro, play some defense for once in your life. But all in all, Skip Bayless, no. No. Matt Castle is not the answer. Dallas Cowboys fans. Start looking someplace else, and hopefully Tony Romo will be back as soon as possible. Philadelphia at Carolina. Carolina 27, Philadelphia 16. I told you guys last week that Cam Newton, I don't think I could ever say anything bad about him again. I, I can't. The man, when he went to Seattle, took care of their business, wasn't scared, looked the blitz in the face, went up there, did what he had to do, handled his business. Listen, I'm going to let you guys know right now, he, he, he's, he's playing like the real deal right now. He's playing like the real deal, and people need to start respecting him like I am right now. Because before, I had a lot of bad things to say about him. I didn't think he was ready. I didn't think anything was going right. Yo, uh, he, he's, play, he's playing pretty well right now. Um, you know, he threw some picks that were tipped. He had one regular one, I think. Um, but it, it's it, he's playing a lot better. And I'm really proud to say that, you know, he's actually a, a legitimate quarterback in this league at this point. And I'm very happy for him. Because like I said, I could dish out, I could dish out, I could take it, but I give credit where it's due. And he's playing like a real NFL quarterback. He can stand in the pocket and he can use his legs. And that's a very dangerous thing right now. Very, very, very dangerous thing right now. Um, as, far, as far as everything else goes, you know, Philadelphia, I was watching their team yesterday and a lot of people say they have a lot of talent. Where is it? You know, they say that, you know, Chip Kelly revamped the team. He did everything that he needed to do and all this stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of talent. They're just not playing well. Where's the, where's the talent at? What, DeMarco Murray? Ryan Matthews is the only bright light that I saw yesterday. Darren Sproles doesn't even look the same. And I think it's because of, uh, you know, Bradford at quarterback. Um, I, re I really don't know. I really don't know exactly what's going on. You know, Sam Bradford is not the answer at QB. I, I really don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on with Philly. Um, and I'm one of those guys, I don't think that it had anything to do with, with you know, with race. I don't think Chip Kelly uh, is is a prejudiced person. I, I think that he was just trying to build the best team with the salary cap that he had and um, trying to make things work. But you can make things work with your 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 players that are playmakers. You know, Deshaun Jackson's, um, you know, LaShawn McCoy. You can make it work. You if, if that's what you need to win, you can make it work. Um, and right now with the way the team is, I just don't see how Philadelphia was even considered a contender. They looked better with Tim Tebow out there, to be honest with you. I, I don't know what's going on right now. I, I really just don't know. I, I, I really have no idea what's happening. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last before, you know, um, 
this, this is ridiculous, man. This is this doesn't make any sense to me. You know, what is it, Laurie, the, the owner, the, you know, that gave him all control of the team. You know, similar to what he did to Andy Reid after a while. Andy Reid did a lot better. He did a lot better with control of the team. Like this, this is just this is like a, a, a science project that he's trying to figure out how he's going to explain to his class. And it's not working for the Philly fans, man. And the Philly fans don't take kindly this kind of stuff. It's, it's not going to work out. I'm telling you right now, Philly don't like to see these losses in these columns. I picked Carolina to win, but just solely in believing in Cam Newton coming off that week. I thought that he was ready. Because when you go to Seattle and you take care of the Legion of Boom, I think you're ready. I think you're ready as a quarterback in this league because it's still tough regardless of what was going on and, and the miscommunication. It's still tough to beat that team. And they, they had Cam's number this whole time. So that's the sole reason that I picked the Panthers. But Philadelphia, is a it, it, they're a disappointment, man. They're a huge disappointment. It's very, very bad, man. Very, very bad. Very, very bad. It's a huge disappointment. Um, and, you know, I don't know where they're going from here, but I just don't see it working out too well uh, for Chip Kelly in the end. You know, he just looks so weird. It's like he's Humpty Dumpty, but he walks around. I don't know. I, I Like I said, I just don't understand how guys are fat, but they're not fat. It, he's just weird. Like a little pudgy little guy. I, I don't... Something about him rubs me the wrong way, and I don't know what's going on there. You know, I like Andy Reid because he's, he's fat. He just wants to be fat. That's it. This guy, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he wants to be fat. He's, uh, you know, concerned about his fatness. He wants to be a little more fat. I don't know what the fat. I don't know what he's doing with the factual. Um, but it's not working out for Philadelphia, and it, it's bad. It's bad. And I think the whole team is just. I don't know, man. I really just don't know. But congratulations to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, that was a huge win. Um, Cam Newton, good stuff. And that, that, that that's pretty much it, man. I. I Hope you guys enjoyed this Week 7 podcast uh, uh, recap for Sunday, for the Sunday games. Uh, the Monday night game will be taken care of separately. Baltimore, Arizona. Again, I got to take Arizona to win this game. I think Baltimore is done for this year. But, you know, it's the NFL. Anything can happen. Uh, again, the podcast source is the name of the app for, uh, in the Google Play Store for Android users. If you're on iTunes, just go to the podcast on iTunes and look for the G-Minds World um, podcast, and you'll find it there where we have a lot of different type of podcast, not only sports. Um, well, if, if, you, if, if you have any issues finding anything, be feel free to go to gmyersworld.com, get yourself a t-shirt, a lot of other things going on there well as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, again, the week seven recap. Until next time, one love.